Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My fiancé cheated on me with a co-worker and blamed me for her affair. I called off the wedding and found happiness without her. Yesterday we had this meeting at our wedding venue, just four months until the big day. We took separate cars since she was coming straight from work. Near the end of the meeting, she casually mentions that her friend needs a ride after returning a rental car and asks if it's cool. I said sure, not thinking much of it since her friend's place is close and I'm familiar with her. I get home and try to reach her for the next three hours no response. Around the hour and a half mark, I text her friend to see if she got home okay. I'm worried as hell at this point. She finally strolls in and says, sorry, it took longer than expected. I hung out with my friend for a bit alright, fine, just give me a heads up next time please. Her friend hits me up a few minutes later, saying hey, sorry I couldn't make it to the venue, didn't see your fiancé tonight I asked my fiancé why her friend would say that. And she played dumb, saying she can't control what her friend says then walks outside. Now I'm hella sketched out. I've never done this before, but I checked her phone records. Yep, I did, and no regrets here. I noticed she called her friend right after she stepped outside and had an hour-long call with some number I didn't recognize on the way to the venue. I grilled her about which rental place they went to and threw in a few more questions. She had answers ready, and they seemed legit at first. Thought maybe I was just being paranoid and decided to sleep on it. This morning I asked if I could see the text from her friend asking for the ride, so I could apologize for grilling her last night. She refused. I said, when I caught up with you on the way to the venue, who were you on the phone with, she says. Oh, that was the friend I picked up later, that's when I knew for sure she was lying. I told her I looked at her phone records and knew that wasn't true. Her story shifts again. I had to meet up with a co-worker to discuss a patient, who's this co-worker, and why couldn't you just talk over the phone, she says. I needed to show him techniques in person. His name is Michael now. I'm sketched out beyond belief. We don't lie to each other, ever. I asked to see the texts with Michael. She flat out refuses again. Why not if there's nothing to hide? Are you having an affair? Do you not want to be with me anymore? She pauses, then starts listing all the things that are wrong with me. I work too much. Don't spend enough time with her. Don't listen. I'm floored this is all news to me. I press again to see the texts. After about half an hour of going back and forth, she finally shows me, and it's wild. They're sexual and they're talking a lot of smack about me. Also, about how they want to be together and are basically in love. She started this job a month and a half ago, and he's a co-worker. Oh, and he's 15 to 20 years older, divorced with multiple kids. I've been footing the bill for her for the past few months while she got back on her feet. I've been working extra hours so she wouldn't need to take on a part-time job. We live together, have a house, three dogs, and a horse. Sorry this is long, but I'm just torn up right now. Didn't see this coming, and we were supposed to get married in four months. Any advice would be appreciated. After this revelation I had another conversation with her. She tried to justify her actions by blaming me for working too much, not listening to her, and not spending enough time together. She said she wouldn't have started talking to this guy if I had been more attentive. I tried to explain that I was working extra hours to support her and the family financially. She claimed she would have preferred getting a part-time job, which didn't make sense to me because I was doing this to avoid that situation for her. She downplayed the affair, saying it was short-lived and they only made out once. When I brought up the explicit texts, she deflected offering no real explanation. I told her that I couldn't trust her again, and this situation was entirely her fault. We discussed the future and the logistics of separating our lives. We decided on either I stay in the house and buy her out, or we sell it and go our separate ways. As for the dogs, we decided one of us would take one, and the other two are still TBD. She's taking the horse with her, and will board it at a barn. We had a three-hour conversation about what went wrong in our relationship. She again pointed out my supposed flaws lack of communication, spending too much time working, and being on my phone. While I acknowledge that I've been busy, and maybe not the best communicator, she never told me she was unhappy. Her actions were an overreaction, instead of communicating her feelings to me. She keeps insisting that I'm throwing away seven years of our relationship, but I reminded her that she threw it away with her actions. I confirmed the extent of the affair from the texts I read. They started talking about two weeks prior, and he invited her to play basketball at a park where they made out. She claims he's not her boyfriend and that it didn't go further but I'm sure it would have if given more time. She's taken off a few times recently, and I suspect she's with him or a girlfriend. It's been awkward living together, but I hope this resolves soon. I moved our joint savings into my individual account, calculated what she owed me, and transferred half of the balance back to our joint account for her to take. I've been working out daily and focusing on improving myself. I met someone new, a woman who's been through a similar situation. We've been spending time together, and it's refreshing to talk to someone who's kind, thoughtful, and independent. I've been seeing a therapist weekly, and it's been very helpful. Now, for the bigger stuff I'm still living in the house with my ex. She's sleeping in the guest bedroom, and the only communication we have is about whether the dogs have been fed. I think she's a terrible person, and no matter what I say, in her mind, this whole mess is my fault. To accuse someone of being a bad communicator, and then use that as an excuse to not communicate your feelings and cheat is hypocritical. I stopped trying to reason with her because she's unreasonable. 
I've been pushing forward with getting the house listed for sale. I contacted an agent, had them come over, and was happy with the proposed sale price. She then requested that I contact two other agents to get their opinions, one of whom was recommended by her friend. So I made all the calls, set up the appointments, and met with these people. This is how the relationship always was. And even though it's not fair, I've been willing to do it all just to get out of here. After meeting with all three, we ended up going with the first agent. Pictures were taken on Sunday, and the house was listed for sale that night. There's an open house next Saturday, and it's already getting a lot of attention online. She'll be taking the horse to a barn somewhere, to be determined. I had a conversation about the dogs and offered to take one or none. She said she wanted to take all three of them to keep them together. They're a happy bunch, and I don't want to fight over taking one if that will break them up. Plus, it selfishly allows me to pursue a clean start. Unexpectedly, I met someone about a week ago, and we've been spending quite a bit of time together. I have no false expectations here but I'm enjoying hanging out with her. She's been through a similar situation in the past and has been helping me through this. It's really eye-opening to talk with a kind, thoughtful, and independent woman. It makes me realize what a narcissist my ex was completely self-centered, dependent, and manipulative. I should have listened to the warnings from family and friends long ago. I definitely fell into the trap of a simple routine. I wasn't enjoying life. It was just an easy situation to be in. Nice house, lots of land, Great animals I didn't want to rock the boat, so I just continued on. You don't really realize this until you take a step back and reflect. Some might say it was wasted time, but I'm using this as a learning experience. I will not ignore red flags in the future. It's wild to think that all of this happened more than four months ago. With time, things have gotten so much better, and hopefully, if someone stumbles upon this while going through a similar situation, they'll realize that time heals everything. I shared the house with my ex until mid-May I was painful being there with her, and the dogs, knowing that my life as I knew it had ended. We were roommates who didn't like each other. I tried to avoid her as much as possible, but it was impossible. We stayed in different bedrooms, but the dogs were allowed to roam to and from at night with the doors open. After the first few weeks, she stopped staying out late, and it didn't happen almost at all for the remainder of the time at the old house. The constant texting and phone calls, however, did not. I think they decided not to pursue a relationship but remained friends. I don't know for sure, and didn't care enough to ask. She moved out in mid-May along with two of the three dogs. Saying goodbye to them was awful the loss felt like a loved one dying. Selling the old house was easy, but buying a new one was brutal. Thankfully, the buyers of my old house allowed me to rent it back from them for a month until June 15th. I made offers on a total of five houses and finally got the last offer accepted towards the end of May. It's really naive as being out of the old place. The memories associated with that house haunted me every day. Especially after my ex left with the other two dogs, it was just very empty. Moving was a pain, but friends and family came through to help with it all. I've now been in my new place for a little over a month, and it's starting to feel more like home each day. I'm still seeing the same woman who is now my official girlfriend. I live a bit closer to her now, which is nice. She treats me really well, and I feel lucky to have her in my life. She helped me get through this situation and has been very understanding about my need for space and emotional ups and downs. I've never been with someone who communicates so well, and it's making me a better communicator myself. My emotional intelligence has also grown significantly. Overall, life is good. While this was one of the hardest things I've had to go through, I feel blessed that it happened. I was going to marry a completely self-centered, ungrateful person. I was so comfortable with my daily routine and didn't want to disrupt my animals' lives or lose my house, so I was willing to put up with being miserable. Now, I will continue working on myself and learning more about my own wants and needs. I will also continue to provide my dog with the best life possible. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.